Was it really just a year ago? Has time moved that quickly? Are we back in the peach state? Is it time for the tradition unlike any other? <laughs> Do you smell what the rock is cooking? Oh. <laughs> yes, America, it's time to celebrate the moment that golf fans wait for all winter at the place where all golf fans want to be, at the tournament all the players dream about, on the grounds that are considered the cathedral of the game. Oh, Jim. In the place where the azaleas bloom, <laughs> where the odor of pimento cheese wafts up through the pines, oh. and the patrons mind their P's and Q's. Yes, they have to. And speaking of P, I believe it was Gene Saracen who, in a desperate need for relief, chose Clifford Roberts' favorite azalea bush to make his toilet and was scolded by Bobby Jones, who said to Saracen, quote, Gene, the chairman wants you to slam your old fella in the butler cabin door so as to remember where and when you should make water. The door? Yes, the Masters is full of those stories. Like the time Craig Stadler lay on the locker room floor and Johnny Miller's amazement was palpable as he began to light his own farts on fire, eventually causing third-degree burns to his rectum and requiring an overnight stay at a local Augusta hospital. <laughs> and who could forget Billy Casper and Pat Summerall? doing belly shots off a giggling Tom Watson as Fuzzy Zeller, dressed in a maid's outfit, suspended himself out of the crow's nest window, screaming, that's what I like about the South. How about the time when Ben Crenshaw, Lee Trevino, and Miller Barber caught a young Phil Mickelson in Butler Cabin watching some of Hootie Johnson's stag film, which then resulted in an all-night game of gleaming the daisy and traumatized a young Mickelson so much that to this day, he is still lactose intolerant. Oh, God. Yes, it's the traditions that matter. Yes. Or I should say, yes, it's the traditions that matter. Traditions honed and refined over decades of exclusion and privilege. Traditions that endure, like all the great ones do, by keeping most of you far away where you can't stink the joint up. Or stink the joint up. And you most certainly can't bring your Uncle Petey to screw things up like he always does. No, because you and I know he just ain't right. <laughs> So now is the time that we gather and watch the best from far away, and we let them do it their way, the old-fashioned way, which is to say, in the nicest way, as for you, <laughs> no way. Yes, the moment starts right now. So gather round the magic telly, fill your hand with petroleum jelly, Get the snacks and fill your belly, but stay at home, because you are smelly. <laughs> get ready, get set, and get bent, because it's time once again for a tradition unlike any other. It's time for the Masters. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. You can listen to The Mike O'Mara Show at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Well, what have we here? Uh, it's a podcast. Fine. And what excitement we have today. It's The Mike O'Mara Show with Mike O'Mara and Rob Spiewak. Now, here's Mike. See, our buddy Jim Nance does that perfectly. And uh, I, I have he to He also stop gets more than one take. Come on. He also gets more money. He does, and he also gives away his necktie when he's done, and you have no necktie to give away. Isn't that wonderful that he does that for the kids? Yes. It's, you know, the kids if, who need neckties. If, that great? Yeah, the struggling youth of today who are going bare-necked. Mike, if you put it in a Ziploc bag, even years later, it still smells of Nance. Nancy. Uh, uh, you know what? We've met him a few times. He's not a cologne guy. I don't think he has an odor. I think he's perfect. I well, mean, in he's every the way, man, absolutely. Welcome to the Mike O'Mara Show. Happy Thursday! Yes, the uh, start of uh, for us golf fans. 
the uh, the greatest tournament of the year, and uh, then it's over. Uh, but we have. Do you much- think this year, yes. Mike, that uh, more people will be interested in the ladies Masters? <laughs> the way they were more interested in the ladies NCAA. You mean the uh, the the amateurs that played? Was no, the, I'm just uh, making a joke because there are no ladies masters. Because well, we there's the amateur women. tournament they have with the ladies now. They have that uh, either the week or yeah, they have that the week before. And that's you, not as much golf as cooking and cleaning, right? Jesus Christ! You that's the attitude at Augusta. You are wound up today. That's Rob Spiewak. Send your letters to him, ladies and gentlemen. We North have bigger Cole. fish to fry. Yes, we do. Because, ladies and gentlemen, Rob sent me a soundboard dedicated to this man. And turn that music down because okay. I want to make sure that we get it right here. Uh, let's see. Which is the one? Is that the one? Let me see. I'm talking about the funky ticket. No, the- I'm not doing that one. Uh, He's a king of the whole wide world. No, I don't, I don't like that one either. That's I, Elvis. Uh, I, uh, Preceded by Rufus gentlemen, Thomas. Um, recently... Northern Virginia Magazine had a King of the Wings competition, and for the, I believe, 50th year in a row, the winner was show regular and dedicated friend of the Mike O'Mara show, James Tiberius Cerrito, who is, ladies and gentlemen, once again for 2024, King of the Wings. Let's bring Jimmy in. Let's bring James in. There he is. There he is, Lord of the wings. The Look at that. God. He's doing his own special and is camera that a shot. Cheesesteak hat? This is the cheesesteak hat, gentlemen. It's very handsome. Good morning. <laughs> so that's cheesesteaks also this year and uh and wings that uh, that you have. And uh you're very excited. Did uh now this is the dance that you uh, used to do out on the streets of uh Herndon, correct? Uh, yes. You don't do that anymore, do you? Uh, <clears throat> there will be an announcement this morning. There will. Be. Oh, oh, this morning. On well, your on show. Now. On your show. Uh, oh, on my show. Well, you're on my show right now, you mallet head. That's you the way the it's supposed to work. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Lay, lay the mount- announcement on it. Uh, Four twenty. Not just known for for weed enthusiasts. Will be the day we celebrate King of the Wings six times. This. Coming April 20th, Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock. You're all invited to Jimmy's. Rob, you're invited to Jimmy's. I will Let's be do there. it again. I will right, be that's there. The, uh, that's the uh, coronation. We'll be celebrating. We'll be doing the chicken dance to a live accordion player. Hey, they're so much better than dead ones. <laughs> now, Sorry, do I have a... For- uh, yes, Rob. This is okay. this is rapidly becoming out of control right here. Rob's playing elements. <laughs> I'm playing elements. Jimmy's on. Uh, yes, go ahead, Rob. You wanted to say. Something. I have one question regarding 420. Were you celebrating 420 when we spoke on the phone last night? Because you were uh, remarkably no, relaxed, very, very relaxed. <laughs> I don't celebrate 420 like I used to in my <laughs> earlier days. Okay, just checking. Right. I don't have the cookie jar <laughs> on top of the fridge chicken. anymore. <laughs> I'm no chicken. I say I'm no chicken, son. <laughs> I ask Rob on a routine basis, and I think people that have listened to the show yeah. for a long time know this. They understand this. That uh, I'd like to get this element or this element. I need a soundboard. Now, usually I get four tops. Rob Spiewak, uh, when he likes to do something, he goes out of his mind. And he went out of his mind uh, for this particular project, uh, labeling you, Jimmy Cerrito, as the king. He was a king and a god in the world he knew. <laughs> now, this one here. Oh, this I want to play my favorite piece of music for you, Jimmy. Oh, good. I'm sorry, because Rob put the effort in, and I wanted to make sure I got all of them. Rob, you'll probably be surprised at the uh, my favorite piece of music here. Okay. Jimmy had a nickel. He didn't have didn't have it long. Both the kids found out that Jimmy had a nickel. Jimmy had a nickel. Jimmy had a nickel. Jimmy had a nickel. <laughs> dumbest, stupidest show. It's a hit yeah, record no. from 1928, Mike. Uh, <laughs> Jimmy uh, had a nickel. What's this one? Betty, is that Jimmy's ring you're wearing? Okay. God. <laughs> Unbelievable. Man of means by no means. King of the... King of the chicken wings, you see. Jimmy, uh, the wings have uh, gone through different changes over the years, correct? They have gone through changes Jimmy, now focus. you bring it up. Please try to focus. Um, you are 
making your own wing sauce now when for years you used the buffalo sauce from the anchor bar am i right about that yes okay yes very good. and uh who gave you the recipe for your wing sauce our new improved wing sauce the first ever jimmy's old town tavern home recipe came to us from chef andre rush that's the, the tv House. show mm -hmm. kitchen commando okay. on your favorite streaming network it's the only <laughs> mic the only oh These are your elements, Rob. You're going to have to be patient. <laughs> what about um, Jimmy Crack Corn? No, I don't have. I that don't one. care. <laughs> I will king of the. <laughs> so, uh, how you been, James? Now that I got them all in, I think <laughs> you got me. <laughs> a lot I think of I got them. How are you, buddy? Uh, I'm great. Top Jimmy Van Halen, Rob. Thanks. I'm great, Mike, and it's great to be here again. And I think it's every couple months we'll probably win something, and you'll invite me back. Have you uh, ever added up the uh, amount of free food that uh, you have given Rob Spiewak in uh, in his run <laughs> up there in Northern Virginia between Rob, his family? Uh, you know, Rob, his major milestones and celebrations usually take place at your joint. A lot of right. times they do, yeah. It's our favorite place. Robert's favorite place by far. Mm -hmm. but, but we've been doing a lot better since he quit drinking, so that's helping the bottom line. That's Thank wonderful. You, and uh, by the way, we you got that going. And I think it's important to point out uh, right now that you don't have to be an alcoholic to go to uh, Jimmy Cerrito's bar. You can go and have a soft drink. Uh, yeah. We have non-alcoholic wine. Yes, it's called grape juice, Mike. That's very exciting, Rob. It's Chardonnay. Very tasty. Very, very, uh, very happy for you. And then, uh, <laughs> We're, we also have been saving money since Mike moved to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Suri. Uh, yeah, hey, I've, sl I've slowed down. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I will have you know that in honor of your appearance, and uh, people have uh, acknowledged the fact that we are taping earlier now, and yes. we are posting the show earlier now, and it's gotten mm -hmm. uh, very, very good reviews, and we're going to continue to do that. So that's something you can look for on a regular basis. Um, I, I'm here for the addition. I made I made, okay well no you're you're in the you're on the regular guest list okay. and yeah. you are A the rotator. first guest on the new incarnation of the show. Uh, yeah, I am. We're Damn very right. happy, very happy to have you uh, with us today. And I will tell you that based on your appearance today and the fact that we were going early, I did not bowl last night, which is now what? it is now the only night of the week where I really well it's not that that would be a lie. I don't want to lie. I would say that that is the regular night of the week, the most yeah. definite night of the week, that I will have adult beverages. Oh, and I yeah. chose not to because I wanted to be fresh and I wanted to be lively for you. And that wouldn't have happened if I'd uh, gone to bowling. Because uh, last week, mm -hmm. bowling uh, happened the day all the upheaval with the show happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. after kind of working things out all day long, <laughs> right. Daddy needed a little release. And uh, I, I didn't bowl well. But I drank well, uh, mm -hmm. well into uh, the third game of the evening. Mm -hmm. It was a, a lot of fun. But back to you. I no. know you are a world traveler. I love your daughter, Kelsey. She is just uh, wonderful on social media, tracking with what she, she is now mm -hmm. living in New Zealand. And you and Mo are recently back from a visit down there, correct? We, we did go to New Zealand for a couple of weeks in January. It was fantastic. Kelsey, by, since you mentioned her, I, I think it... I can't help but point out that she was born on National Chicken Wing Day, July 29th. He never stops promoting, ladies. Isn't and that amazing? He it, never he's stops truly promoting. a great father. She was and a born great first. Bar owner, yeah. And then oh, okay. they named it. Her birthday became National Chicken Wing Day. Hi, Kelsey. Hi, Owen. They're Hi, in New Kelsey. Zealand. Owen is her beau. Owen's her beau, and they are getting ready to leave New Zealand and relocate over to the northeast coast. Of Australia for 12 months. Well, tell her to post about it because I love seeing how she's doing and yep. what she's uh, up to. As far as the wings, yep. uh, mm -hmm. you are now what would be referred to as a dynasty. You are a <laughs> dynasty of, uh, of wings. You have won yeah. it how many years in a row? Well, we've been open 27. Okay. Uh, they've only had this uh, Northern Virginia, thank you, Northern Virginia Magazine. They've had the contest six times. We've and been invited to participate all, all six. six. Hmm? You've won all six? All six. Wow. 
You can I ask a question, more. Jimmy, that might be a little sensitive, and you can decline to comment if you like, but I know the reason that you, one of the main reasons you switched to the new, now superior homemade sauce is the Anchor Bar stopped selling sauce because the Anchor Bar has franchised into this area. Mm -hmm. How did the Anchor Bar fare in the wing contest? Well, if you go to the chart... <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can't see it, Jimmy. Yeah, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna point it out to you. I can't. See so Jimmy's is here. Right, number one winner. Okay. So we made it through five rounds. These are like the March Madness brackets. Yeah. Here comes uh, the king. Here comes the big number. The anchor bar is here. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah. And they didn't make it to there. Oh, that's sad. They, so they didn't even. They didn't even place. That is. They didn't cool. get out of the first round. How and about that? That is pains cool, me though. that they didn't. I'm talking about that is really, <laughs> I was really, hoping look, I was one. hoping the anchor bar would go all the way to the finals and we could go head to head in the finals. There you go. Because they were yeah. they got all pissy with their recipe, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Right? What happened quickly, what happened was they always, always allowed me and supported me to use their wing sauce from day one. Right. And then when they franchised, I got the cease and desist letter. There you go. From attorney bastards. in Buffalo, seven pages, Horrible letting me know that I could no longer advertise or promote their wing sauce. By the way, I don't do this for any other reason than Jimmy's a buddy. If you happen to be in the northern Virginia area, just outside of Washington, D.C., there's a uh, there's a little tavern in Herndon. There is a tavern in the town. I think I got them all, Rob. I think I used you are you are it like Picasso. In the town. Jimmy's Old Town Tavern, located in the heart of a uh, town referred to as Herndon, Virginia, where yeah. incidentally, here's trivia for you: I began your first job. My commercial radio career at a little yeah. radio station called W O H N, and Jimmy's Old Town Tavern is a classic old style. Thank you, old style <laughs> tavern, and Jimmy is there. 13% uh, of the time during the Roughly, year, and you might yeah. be able to bump yeah. into him and yeah. enjoy uh, in wings, beef on weck, uh, the best cheesesteaks because he's won that competition mm -hmm. as well. And, uh, you know, I'm proud of you. And, and he's Mike, also, yes, go ahead, Don't Rob. forget the gym shows. Everything on the on the menu is delicious. <laughs> yeah, had to get that in there. Are they really called gym shows? Not my idea. <laughs> it wasn't my idea. Whose idea was it to call the uh, nachos Jim Chos? Uh, it might have been Maureen's. I don't know. <laughs> Pre-wine, post-wine, don't <laughs> yeah, ah! 1996. 1996. Oh. That, uh, that is top, uh, top of the mountain. Jimmy, it was a collaboration. Uh, you know what? It's really cool to have long-term relationships with people, and Jimmy goes back before I even owned a bar in the Northern Virginia area, mm -hmm. and... Uh, Jimmy gave me a tour of his establishment. I love telling this story where he showed me every single element. And this is back before he uh, started even his first remodel and his place was much smaller. And he had a tiny microscopic kitchen where he doled out the food like nobody's business. And he had this wonderful crew in there. And at the very end of the tour, Jimmy takes out a dollar bill and he says, if you're lucky, well, that's a five, if you're lucky... <laughs> Inflation. You'll make a dollar. And if you're really lucky, and he took it, and he took a little strip off the end, this is how much profit you will make. Uh, Jimmy, with inflation being what it is, uh, with costs of food, yeah. uh, the state of Jimmy's Old Town Tavern, you've you've expanded a lot. You've increased your space. Mm -hmm. You uh, you, don't you own your building now? Mm -hmm. Isn't that you own the building? It's in. How, what is the state of the union as far as Jimmy's Old Town Tavern right now? The state of the union is yes. We we do great, just like every restaurant in America. You do great until January, February, early March. It's a true dip in sales. You just watch your bank account fall way way down and you just say come on st patrick's day come yeah. on nice weather yeah. why why is it because i mean i know the holidays are a big time but you would think cold weather not a lot to do outside why is it such a substantial dip uh january february march do you know uh, well traditions you know new year's resolution let's yeah new year's uh, resolution let's let's go out. they they, yeah. they just uh rock let's, and roll through the holidays they want to save money oh that. my credit card bills ginormous like we can't go out we're eating at home from now on that's it mm, okay. all that stuff and, and it you yeah. see it go down 
And how um, was your St. Patty's Day this year? <laughs> Glorious, thank God. Oh, Glorious. I love to hear that, man, yeah. because that's where I would be yeah. after my uh, ill-fated yeah. endeavor went yeah. down the proverbial toilet. Uh, I was a regular. I, got the pin. I would. What's that? I have your pin. Yeah, uh, you do. You do. And uh, you got rid of the sign, though, right? You got that out of your garage. No, it's in the garage. You want to see it? You still have the sign? I, I don't know what to do with it. Yeah, I saw oh, it over the summer. Man, I'll never have a big enough space to uh, to use it myself. But boy, I would love to have that someday. I might really turn it into that. a snowboard. <laughs> yeah, or or multiple snowboards, Jimmy. Yeah. Yeah. As the there was a there were two signs. There was the outside sign for O'Mara's Pub, and then there was the inside sign. You have the inside no. large. You have no. the outside sign. The outside the, one. I got that Huge giant one. one that sat out on the corner. Really, the one that hung up? No, it, it, it was like on the ground, out by the road. Okay, you still. Yeah, have it's that? probably is Jimmy. Am I missing? It's probably ten feet wide. About four sure. feet high? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's and longer it's than Maureen's car. It's, it's, costs car. it's got five thousand dollars. It cost five thousand oh. dollars when I yeah. had it made. Now hey. probably there are people now that are talking to me and laughing their ass off because inflation has changed things so much. But that was a lot of money when yeah. we were a startup yeah. back uh back in the day. And Jimmy I'm holding it for you. Jimmy's bar was across town. He lived closer to my joint mm -hmm. than he lived to his joint so uh you know we go back and forth a lot and uh, there have been some amazing times you had a picture the other day of our friend from los angeles rick hostily I, he's yep. not living in la anymore is he no he he's lives in both la and northern virginia he goes back and forth and rich was uh the guy that we rode to sturgis mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. and yep. so and jimmy's been down here jimmy drove my motorcycle back when yep. i had a motorcycle we got a history man uh yeah. we've driven we've ridden motorcycles up to uh, Laconia that we named Rainconia. Rainconia. When, when the there, bikes tipped over in the U-Haul. Oh, God, because it rained every effing day, every day that we were going up to New Hampshire. And it was and finally when we got up there, it was still pouring. And yeah. we decided that uh, we would put the motorcycles yeah. in a U-Haul and yeah. rent a truck to trailer them back. Yeah. And they were not secured properly. And we literally pulled out of the, Mike, <laughs> the parking lot and we Mike, heard a thump. Yes. One of the scariest 10 seconds of my life was when they put the ramp on the back of the U-Haul. Yeah, and yeah, like I, a single ramp, right? A, single a little ramp tiny ramp. ramp, about two feet wide. And they said, "Just ride your motorcycles up that ramp." Oh right my the back god! Of yeah, we had and to wheel the mine. motorcycles up the ramp, and we got them in. But in your relief, apparently, when it was time to secure the motorcycles inside the U-Haul, something went terribly wrong, and we, we well, we damaged both our bikes, right? Yes, but but we we you and I did not tie them in the. The pro from Oh, Ewald. the pro did. That's right. That now. Oh my God! And, really? And I was saying thought... no. I was telling him no, no. You need to put a cable over here. You need to put a cable. And he, oh, I've done this a million times. I got my own Harley. Just let me do it. Well, Remember? you know, this joint is so much fun, and we've had listeners from all over the country. Some people all over the world have uh, visited. Rob, you're the more regular of yeah. Jimmy's, and uh, you get in there much more often because I don't get back to uh, the area at all. And uh, you've been there, and lots of changes have happened. It's Jimmy's, it's right? amazing with the new dining room, uh, and also the beer garden is the best. And I guess that now is now that we're doing the springtime thing, to be able to go out and uh, have a Coca-Cola out there in the beer garden. And uh, it's dog friendly, which I love. Great dogs come by. Uh, you've got the ring game, which is always fun to watch people that aren't drinking Coca-Colas try to think they can swing the <laughs> ring onto the hook. No gambling, you know, folks. Uh, no, uh, one time, I forget what our occasion was, is we challenged you to it, but you didn't know we had tied a small loop in the string so it didn't <laughs> so reach it never would reach and he kept saying i don't know what the problem is we made it impossible yeah. for you but it is uh better and more fun yeah. than ever and it's it's a lot of people they do what they call like the mike o'mara show field trip or tour mm -hmm. of washington dc and it's drive by and see our old studio or go to the peking yeah. gourmet or something. but the one place they always stay and eat and have a great time is jimmy's old town tavern because yeah. it's our it's an environment. It's so nice there. I love it. So Thank anything uh, exciting you. and new? Because we've been talking about how wonderful we love your joint. And, uh, I love you. Anything I, new going on? Anything sure. uh, in the future? What's uh, what's happening at the Old Town Tavern? We are currently under construction because this is Northern Virginia. So there's right. got to be some orange cones somewhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you will find orange cones in the beer garden as we speak. While, what are you building? 
Uh, my our good friend Chuck Brown, the contractor, is yeah. he's still he's, alive. Oh, he's rocking it. My, what a pleasant way to regard him. Yep. Sorry about that. He is out there uh, with his crew building a pavilion in our beer garden, which will be a shelter over the stage area for you know the bands and the private yeah. parties where Rob had Rob was, Jr.'s yeah, graduation third, party. Yeah, the third's graduation, yeah. Who's so gonna, is good. the mayor going to do the – How do they have a new mayor in her? Uh, Sheila Olam, you. I'm sure she'll be there. And Lisa Merkel is – you know what? She loves coming in every day with her husband, sitting at the corner of the bar and but drinking she's, wine so she's and not, having she's, lunch. She's not the new mayor. She's the, Who's the new mayor? Uh, her name is Sheila. So Herndon uh, is ran by women. H-E-R is run, Herndon. Is, is run, sh- okay. So yeah. it's Sheila is the mayor? Yep. All right. And uh, you have a good relationship with her? Sure. Yep. Everybody, Been a regular since we opened. <laughs> everybody's oh, staying out great. of your way up there, letting you uh, run your business the way you want to? Yeah, things are going good. Uh, our Memorial Day party's coming up. Uh, I've all, I'll always extend the offer if I know. you and the family want to come up. And I got two motorcycles out in the garage. Oh wow! I come just on sitting up, right there. I'd love to. I'm not inviting you, you to sh- Rob. Not on a bike. No. No, no, no. But Mike, you should come up for that, and then that day we can do the show in my basement. That's very exciting. <laughs> Nothing. You know what? That sounds like no. I don't think oh. I'm, I, I'm not going to be. Why don't you come up on 420, Mike? Uh, uh, 420. Yeah, I'll, be, I'll smoke a big fatty. I'll have a. Uh, you know, I'll be totally oh. stoned and then ride the motorcycle around. The last time I celebrated 420 was in New Orleans, not too long ago. Last year, after, right? After a full day of day drinking with with Rob and the misses. Yeah, I remember. Wait he a minute. Said, wait, wasn't that the? Didn't we have a show that night? The show was the night before. It was the oh, day okay. after the show. And Jimmy, all day, all he said was... Miserable. What was the name of that hamburger place that was just outside of the quarter? Uh, the, uh, sh- there's a legendary hamburger place. Yeah, and it's supposed that, to be neither the, one of you are going to re- remember it because you're both drinking heavily. Mike, I was not. Bad. I was not. But uh, we And Jimmy, all day, well, oh, he's was talking about... Was that post-alcohol you? Yeah. Mike, remember, I yeah. was sober in New Orleans. <clears throat> not I wasn't. Yeah. That's right. I get it. So That's he right. kept talking about how great this place was and how I'm going to yeah. see you there tomorrow Couldn't at wait. noon. Can't Couldn't wait. wait. Tomorrow at noon, get a text from about 11.52. Can't make it. <laughs> I yeah. just can't make it. Yeah, you were Mike. mixing chemicals, Jimmy. It's not smart. Mike, I got to tell you, I haven't I haven't smoked anything in a long time, but I was talked in. I was talked into edibles in New Orleans. Are you were? A couple of, right. Was that? Uh, do you do that now with any kind of? You know, it's not a big deal anymore. Everybody's doing that now. So, I mean, do you do you do that uh, on a regular basis? No, it was <laughs> the only time I ever had edibles, and I was told, "Well, uh, I just did five, and I'm barely feeling it." So oh, here's boy. four, Jimmy. And you got way high. Oh, I said, "Well, four might be too many. Let me take three and see how it goes, and I'll work okay. my way up to five. Mm-hmm. Now, really, I'd like to thank Chef Marty for these gummy bears. Cause <laughs> chef Marty. Love you, Marty. That's Love a, you, bro. Is that your chef? chef oh, yeah. Marty? He was there. Yeah, he's, he's in the documentary, isn't he? In the uh, in your in your Kitchen Commander yes, documentary? Yeah, I a, remember him, yeah. So is he much, still smoking? No, huh? Is he still smoking? Oh. <laughs> he's a chef. <laughs> so, yeah, he, he works in the kitchen at Jimmy's. It's, it's a prerequisite. Yeah. Smoke what makes the ribs that's taste good. so good, Mike? That's I a, was. This is the best cheese steak. The best one cheese steak I've ever. Had. Uh, yeah. There you go. Yum yum. <laughs> All right. There we so go. my one, Mike, my one night yes. on Bourbon Street and wow. Mike O'Mara listeners everywhere. It was it was a Mike O'Mara party, and I just kept telling everybody, I'll be out until 2 in the morning. Let's do this. I'll be out all night, <laughs> up and down the boulevard. I, have I to passed say, out at I, that I, burger joint at uh, 7 p.m. Oscar and, uh, and Rob lingered longer after uh, the show at the House of Blues. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think it's important to explain this once in a while that, well, Rob knows this. Rob, you know I give and I give and I give. Mike, you give, Uh, you give, and you keep giving, and then you give some more. (laughs) Give some more. I was just totally tapped. Uh, Felt a little flourish uh, when I had that, and uh, I, I, I didn't make it to the second location. It just, uh, it was about a three-hour 
uh, you know, event uh, with the post and the pre and mm -hmm. all that other stuff. But mm -hmm. you guys hung out, and Jimmy yeah. is an ambassador for the show, and I appreciate yes. you doing that when uh, you go out. You've been out all over the country when we've done our stuff. You've been along there with us. You're part of the deal. People know I, who you I are. I take over for you when you go to your hotel. I stay up and mingle. Yeah, I exactly. Go, go to my Once hotel. I hear, and you I got me. Cashews. That's all I do. <laughs> hey, you know what? Uh, speaking of, uh, I'm here. Jimmy, Jimmy's Old Town Tavern. And Jimmy, don't say anything during this because you might mess it up. We have a uh, a person that uh, we haven't identified all week long, uh, known as uh, as the great and powerful Oz. And I am curious, uh, just very briefly, Oz, have you ever had an opportunity to uh, dine at Jimmy's Old Town Tavern? No. I haven't had the chance yet. Hopefully soon. Wait a minute. <laughs> that's the like great. It's one of our regulars. It's Mike, every day. Mike, who was that? <laughs> the, the great and powerful Oz. Yes, we are using the uh, the finest in technology. Yeah, there are a lot of moving parts to this there show are. now. It's Sounds like, like some of the people are, that come in during the day shift. It's like the yeah. kids have taken over the candy store right now. Oz, uh, <laughs> well, Oz, when you get to the Northern Virginia area, you'll have to uh, you'll have to uh, sample Jimmy's Old Town Tavern. I recommend it highly. Can't wait. Looking forward to those wings. <laughs> I hope we have enough wings for you, Oz. <laughs> There you go. That's us. Uh, Follow the yellow brick road right to Herndon. Very, yeah, very exciting. All right. So uh, there it is. Think of the wings. James. Yes. Uh, almost time to say goodbye to you. I want to uh, ask you uh, coming up. You've got uh, the Memorial Day ride. Uh, mm -hmm. What's the special this weekend? Isn't there always a food special this particular weekend or what? What's going well, on? we always do the Friday Night Fish Fry. Yes. It's always a headache. There we always go. do prime rib on Saturday. There's the sound of the fish right there. That's the uh, the sound of the when right. the Pope fish. when the Pope was in town about six years ago. Didn't he come by for the fish fry? No, he had the gym shows. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> on a Friday night during Lent, couldn't what's believe the, it. What's Could the fish? What's the fish that you use in the food? Is it still carp? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever is coming out of Lake Manassas this third this uh, third <laughs> afternoon. I got the third eye. I got the it's a Homer Simpson fish. That's what we got with that. Uh man, you are such a good buddy and congratulations uh on the wings. They are the best wings you will ever eat. Damn. And my wife, uh, that's her favorite food. If she goes out for anything, she loves her wings. Carla loves her wings, and she loves them at Jimmy's. And I am proud of you uh, once again. Not only wings, but cheesesteaks. It's Jimmy's Old Town Tavern. You are the greatest. And uh, what does it say? Thank, thank you, you, thank you, thank you. Oh, oh thank you, oh, thank uh, you, voters. Nation. Yes, that is a uh, that is a very very elaborately printed uh, sign. That, Mike, uh, that Jimmy sign cost. $5,000. Yes. Uh, very, very nice. Uh, congratulations, King. We will see you uh, down the road. Ladies and gentlemen, Jimmy Cerrito. Thank you. And, Thank you. Uh, that's I love Mal. I love Kelsey. Right, bye. Bye. So long. Bye, Good Jimmy. Bye. See you later. Thanks so much. Go Bills. Uh, go Bills. All right. And then the opening of the NFL when he has a million people from Buffalo at his uh, joint. You know, there's the always something going on there. That's yes, the there is. Always something going on at Jimmy's. Always a pleasure. We survived that opening segment. Uh, and we will have uh, the round table Yay. coming up, ladies and gentlemen. And then... Uh, Later on in the show, uh, more parenting advice because I have to ask Rob and our listeners something about my son. Maybe I'm approved. We'll be right, right. back, everybody. I'm drinking it right now. With warm weather running wild, you need hydration that keeps up with every moment. A single stick of liquid IV, ladies and gentlemen, makes ordinary hydration into extraordinary hydration. With three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink, plus eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness, Liquid IV uh, does it all in a single delicious stick. No sugar, no artificial sweeteners, non-GMO, and free from gluten, dairy, and soy. Try white peach, green grape, or the one I'm drinking this morning, lemon lime. Oh, that's your favorite. You love well, the lemon lime. I like the peach as well. Yeah. Actually, I love them all, and you will too. Just tear, pour, and live more. Oh, that's new. I like nice, that. right? It's a zero sugar hydration solution with no artificial sweeteners, clinically tested to hydrate more than water alone. 
Turn your ordinary water into extraordinary hydration with Liquid IV. Get 20% off your first order of Liquid IV when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code TMOS at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code TMOS at liquidiv.com. Oh, flip it. That's not right. That is. Look at the crack, and he hit the wrong button, Mike. You know, I've got more things to play today than you, and I did it. I right. know, I know. You know I just it was I grazed the wrong pad. pad on the on the pad. A lot of things moving on uh, the show today, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, we start today with uh, Madonna. Now, Rob, I know you have access to this video. I would love, if possible, to play. The video, if you think it's appropriate, not appropriate, but if you think it's worthy of the show on right. uh, tomorrow's bonus show, because okay, uh, yeah, we'll find apparently it. it's got some cussing in it. If you happen to be on the staff at a venue where Madonna, Madonna. is performing, uh, here is a warning for you. She does not like air conditioning. In fact, during a show in Miami over the weekend, oh, wow, if I'd only known. If I'd, yeah. I would have gone right across the alley, I could have seen her. Uh, she actually stopped her show because they kept the air conditioning running. You know, when you get old, Rob, uh, the blood thins. And, yes. Uh, and the, uh, you know, you wear a parka when it's 80 degrees. Mike, uh, do you remember our engineer, Bear? Yeah, I remember yeah. Bear Gransville Jones. Exactly. He used to do a lot of uh, engineering work at venues around D.C., and Aretha Franklin had it written into her contract, no air conditioning at the venue. Because she, at the time, I'm sure, was uh, you know was a little longer in the tooth. Too, yeah, and, she, and I think they think it hurts their throat. You know, I yeah. think it dries out the throat. That's probably what it is. Uh, so here's the deal with Madonna. She said, quote, You don't know how much I've been waiting for this whole effing show. I'm working my ass off. The artificial ass, as we've yeah. seen before. Yeah. I deserve it. Respect me. The show will not go on until you respect me. She also reportedly said, quote, I also work very hard because I am a mother and I am an <laughs> artist and I am a queen. Yes. I will uh, always beat you. Now, if I heard Madonna saying that, I'd be putting my hands together. I'd be applauding that. That, to me, would be part of the show. Uh, Madonna Bonata also uh, stopped her final Miami show on Tuesday night, but for a different reason, to pay tribute to the victims of the 2016 Pulse nightclub shooting. Uh, we'll have the video of her meltdown, hopefully, on the bonus show, if it's worthy. Yes. You know. Now, Mike, also, not a great day for Madonna. You know who came out against Madonna yesterday? Who's that? Valerie Bertinelli, America's right. sweetheart. Uh, she was asked if she would ever go see, and I was going to use this in the flip side, but I'll, I'll play it here because it fits. She was asked, Valerie Bertinelli, uh, if she would ever go see Madonna in concert, which I think is a pretty easy question. I would, given the mm -hmm. chance. I'd see her. She said no. Well, I would love to see her, but I like when people get on stage on time. I love her. She's brilliant. She deserves every good thing coming to her. But I really like when bands say they're going to be on at 9, and they actually go on stage at night. Like Taylor Swift, she actually has a clock, counts down, she is on time. I don't want to know how long I'm going to be sitting in the arena before I see the person I paid to come see. I agree. I'm I with do Valerie too. all the I way. I actually do, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, it's just, uh, that's the diva factor, I think. It's probably yeah. SOP for Madonna to do that. So uh, I'm on Team Bertinelli on that one. Uh, in her upcoming thriller, Never Let Go, Halle Berry plays a mom living off the grid and trying to protect her two sons from some kind of evil after an apocalyptic event. How many movies? How many movies in the last five years have been post-apocalyptic? How yeah, many, huh? almost uh, all the Melissa McCarthy movies. <laughs> she went uh, a little method acting for the part. She says, quote, there was no electricity, uh, no lights, my character skinning squirrels, and they're eating bugs and frogs, raw frogs, in the woods. It was a challenge. She adds, quote, I had to really skin a squirrel. Now, this falls into the category huh. of how tough is it to be an actor? Okay, right. you're skinning a squirrel, but the squirrel's dead, and okay, I get it. Uh, you know, these things wildly challenged me, she said, to create some reality within this world that felt so foreign. That's actor speak 101, isn't it? It really, it is. really is. Uh, now, was the squirrel the kind of squirrel that goes around in a police car? No, that's the squirrel that buys like uh, an old Crown Victoria with the uh, with the with the light. Didn't have on the to side. skin him. No, and they're now okay. primarily the squirrels I see are now uh, Dodge Chargers. 
Those are what they ah, use yeah. a lot of, and uh, mm-hmm. I'd still love to have one, especially out on the super slab. Route 75. You uh, hated the, uh, the ride, Mike. You hated yeah, the suspension. Uh, no word on whether the bugs and frogs were real, but uh, that would be pretty gross. Never Let Go hits theaters on September 27th, and I still love Halle Berry. I yeah. do, I do, I do. Kevin Costner would consider returning to Yellowstone to give his character John Dutton a proper send-off. He says, quote, I'd like to be able to do it, but we haven't been able to. Maybe this uh, will circle back to me. Uh, it, by the way, does anyone know when is uh, Yellowstone going to come back uh, at 2030. All? Oh, 2030. Very exciting. He says, of course, feeling really comfortable would probably include patching things up with creator Taylor Sheridan. Quote, I've uh, kind of had my own fantasy of how Dutton's final arc might be, but that's Taylor's thing. That's what uh, Kevin Costner said. Mm-hmm. Uh, I said that much to him a while back. I had thoughts on how it could happen, but we just have to see. I just think it's so highly unprofessional when people that uh, you know that we love to watch on television or listen to on the radio let you know personal squ- squeamish problems get in the way of uh, you know being a pro. Mike, you know, give the people what they want. I think it's ridiculous. You, know, you just, just get out want there and your, do it. You just want your content. That's all. That's all I want. That's all I want. Sorry, I screwed that up because I was nervous about it. I really <laughs> was. I was nervous about even talking about it. But uh, anyhow, Oz, uh, how you doing? You doing okay over there? <laughs> yeah, thinking about the squirrel and bugs. Maybe on the next trip to Jimmy's. Thank you very much. That's it. That's uh, that's Oz doing shtick. Ladies and gentlemen, let's, uh, love it. Let, let's move on, shall <laughs> Please. we? Please. Uh, all right. I'm old. You know that. I don't keep it a secret. I don't care about keeping it a secret. Uh, you're as young as you feel. And now here are a few more signs uh, that you're old. Okay. All right? all right. I have 15. You drive by a nice house and say, that's a nice house. I did it yesterday. <laughs> so funny. You cut your juice with water because everything's too sweet these days. Not me. <laughs> Doesn't fall into that care. No, I don't do that. I add sugar to my juice. I just don't. I don't drink juice. I don't. I don't drink a lot of juice unless it's uh, you know in some restaurant. Hey, Mike. Somewhere. What about mood juice? You know, it's good to have a glass of milk. I have every a glass day. of milk once in a yeah, while, warm, sure. right before <laughs> bed. Uh, you never told a server, please give my compliments to the chef. You've told a server, please give my I compliments have, to the chef. I have done that. Well, you did that since you were sixteen, probably. Uh, number twelve. You've recently said, "How do you work this dang thing?" I was watching Rob do it uh, earlier today on the show. You were uh, doing that. I'm you? trying my best, Mike. Trying That's to be it. like the kids. Yeah, do a little better. Uh, you've uh, leave the plastic on things to keep them new. Never, no. never will. Won't do it. That do that it. is old lady in Queens, New York, to me. That's the way that goes. Anybody do it in your family? No, no, I don't think so. And as a matter of fact, you know what? As soon as I buy an album, I take the plastic off. I hate seeing them wrapped up. Do you think have... that that, uh, as far as a value of shelf life, is something that will be I done think... or not done when you're like in a record? When you go I... to the record stores? Yeah, I think that it... the only thing that really would preserve the value is if it had hype stickers on it. What are like hype a, stickers? Hype stickers like a, the new record from Taylor Swift or something like that that they put inside the plastic. I try to save those if I can, but I don't think that I don't see any. If it's an open record, having plastic on it is not going to extend the value. I think this is talking more about uh, you know the furniture and oh, stuff I hate plastic on yeah. furniture. Uh, number ten is you know exactly where your heating pad is. Guilty. I know with all my uh, issues, I know where it is. I could tell you where it is right now. It's, it's in under the, your uh, ass right now, right? It's no. <laughs> I uh, it's uh, it's on my genitals. <laughs> right there, or as they like to go on our number one prep service, my junk. Mike, is it there but not on? 70-year-old men saying junk. Where's your junk? Uh, Number nine, you start conversations with strangers in public. Guilty? Yeah, I've done it. it. What? Have you done? This is the time when I kind of read the story and you fill in the uh, the blank. Yeah, I was going to say, I have absolutely done that. Okay, It's it's, it's a good passing of time. You've recently stood outside a store in the morning waiting for it to open. I've never done that. Oh, never. Yeah. You have? You've stood outside Costco before 10 a.m., No, you? never at Costco. One time, uh, some years ago, I did drive by the liquor store, and there was too long of a line, so I decided not to do it. I've waited outside for the opening of a theme park. 
but you've never, never store. like had a particular item where you said no. I want to get there. No. Uh-uh. Okay. All yeah. right. I guess that's the other guy. Uh, number seven. <laughs> uh, you watch the local news every night. Bonus points if you say things like, "What's this world's coming to?" Do you watch local news every night? Every morning. Not okay. at night, though. So that probably counts. Probably. Yeah, similar. I think so. Yeah. Number six. You judge parents if their kid isn't wearing a jacket. Like it's April. That kid should really have a jacket on. Don't care. You don't, don't care, care I don't about either. that. I, that doesn't. I fall. I don't fall into that category. Number mm-hmm. five. You use your speakerphone. Ugh, for most of your calls, she's not. She's younger than me, but she does it, Carla, and I hate it. I hate it. I will do it if I'm at home and there's no one around, but I'll never do it in a public place. Ever. Carla is now calling the great and powerful Oz like 70 times a day. Sure, which, uh, and she uses it on the speakerphone, and for some reason, it uh, it just makes me uncomfortable. Is his I, voice uh, altered on the speakerphone? Uh, well, she say, uh, I don't know what he did. Speakerphone, can you say hello, Carla? There it is. Yeah, it's exactly how it sounds to me. Uh, number four, you can't stand or sit without making some sort of noise. Uh, that's that's BS. I, I about that probably one. make a noise when I stand up. Number three, you snap your fingers when you're trying to remember something. No, no, no. I don't no, do that either. No. Number two, you still print your boarding pass just in case. I do. Do you I really? Do. I do. Yeah, I do. Do you do the same thing with tickets for concerts or do you use your phone? Yeah. I used to. I I will go to a movie or a concert or an airplane. I will have it on my phone, but I'll also have a hard copy. Just you in go case. to more concerts than I do. Don't the certain venues now require that it's done digitally without? Well, no. Uh, what they'll paper? do is they will scan a QR code, and it can be on your phone. Yeah, but I I know that uh, with the Everblades, I'm almost a thousand percent sure that the games that we have down here, you bring your. Uh, phone and they don't do the paper thing. I think most of, but I could most be of wrong. the concerts I go to, you just have to bring a can of food. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and number one, you uh, eat antacids like Pepsi AC or Tums like candy. No, candy. I don't. I, I don't have trouble with the the, the heartburn. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, well, so, that's it. That's uh, that's how. So I'm only uh, medium old, world. Mike. I think. Uh, thank you. Medium old is fine. Finally, today, the world's oldest man says the secret, Rob Spiewak, of his long life. Yeah. Is Luck and moderation and fish and chips, just like Jimmy serves every hey, Friday. Yes. Englishman John Alfred Tinniswood. Would you like to guess his age? World's oldest man? Is he 82? <laughs> 111. I missed it, but I was One, under, so. <laughs> 82. He's been confirmed <laughs> as the new holder of the title by Guinness. Uh, it follows the death of the Venezuelan record holder Juan Vicente Perez. This, but I hate it when they do the three, and it's like on one side of the column. Juan Vicente <laughs> Perez. Well, you know why Perez finally passed away. He was waiting for his kids to die. <laughs> he was 114 when he died. That's by the way. so yeah. old. I would not want to be that old. Gisaburo Sonobi from Japan was the next longest lived. He died March 31st at 112. So that makes uh, this guy, Alfred Tinniswood, the oldest living man. He was presented with a certificate by Guinness World Records on Thursday at the care home. I love British speak. I do too. Uh, I think we're going to move grandfather into the care home, uh, where he lives in Southport in northwest England. The retired accountant and great-grandfather said moderation was a key to healthy life. My father used to say, Rob Spiewak, mm-hmm. moderation in all things, including moderation. Which I Very think wise is man. Very wise man. He never man. smokes. He rarely drinks and uh, follows no special diet apart from a fish and chip supper once a week. Here's his quote. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you drink too much or you eat too much or you walk too much, if you do too much of anything, you're going to suffer eventually. Uh, that's what he told the Guinness Book of World Records. I see. But ultimately he said, it's pure luck. You either live long or you live short and you can't do much about it. He sounds chill. He sounds he like does. a chill guy. Sounds like know? he might already be dead. Well, it actually, I think, uh, diminishing your stress and not caring and just being mellow yeah. is uh, probably one of the keys to long life. That's why I'm going to die next Thursday. That's the way it looks. <laughs> I've already uh, prepared a eulogy. We'll be good. We'll be ready to go. The world's oldest woman, oldest living person also, is Maria Brañas Morera of Spain. She is 117 years old. 
Wow, 117, Mike, and still loves the Mike O'Mara show. Yes, she does. <laughs> Womb to the tomb. That's what we call it on this show, ladies and gentlemen. Womb to the tomb. I have a level of discomfort with my son. I want everybody to be on their best behavior when I All discuss right. it. There's only one person I'm doing the show with, so he knows who he is, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I'll be careful. I'll try to talk about it when we come back on the Mike O'Mara show. Fuel your peak performance with full wellness. What was that word? Fuel. Fuel. The ultimate functional food brand for wellness, founded by a guy that's at the Masters this week, Phil Mickelson, and renowned performance coach Dave Phillips. It's a game-changing performance coffee supplement. You can elevate your brew with just one scoop for enhanced focus, reduced caffeine jitters, increased collagen, and fat-burning support. For Wellness makes it easy to integrate high-quality, functional ingredients into your daily routine. Plus, with a risk-free 60-day money-back guarantee, what do you got to lose? Mm -hmm. Unleash your full potential with For Wellness because your body and your mind deserve the best. So, if you drink coffee, it's time to give For Wellness a try. Head to forwellness.com slash TMOS and use code TMOS for 25% off your order. Again, that's forwellness.com slash TMOS for 25% off. And make sure you use our promo code so they know that we sent you, ladies and gentlemen. All right, I have not uh, done any kind of dive online about this because I just haven't. But um, do you do, if you have a parenting issue, do you sometimes do an online dive? I, when I have any issue, I will usually try to, you know, investigate it and research it. Yeah, I it. just, I've always found anything, all parenting advice is usually a little shallow, inaccurate because it's, they're so case by case. I don't think you can paint with broad strokes. Chat groups stuff. are useless to me. Oh, when absolutely. You, when you have yeah. like a technical question, whether you're doing a DIY project and you go on and there are 15 answers, including people that will volunteer that they don't know either, which is about yeah. as useless as something you can have. This concerns my son, who I have to say is very comfortable in his own skin. Okay. Comfortable to the point of, uh, you know, at, at the routine. This is so awkward for me to talk about. It's okay. That's why I'm closing my eyes. The, okay. the evening routine, uh, whether he's playing football, whether he's uh, going to his baseball lesson, he's actually getting pitching coaches right now that are oh, working cool. with him. And in the evening, the drill is uh, take a shower. At the end of the day, he's a ten-year-old right. boy. He gets that ten-year-old, you know, thing going. Uh, and, and also, he probably doesn't have the time management skills to shower in the morning. Well, and he will on occasion if he feels like he needs it to feel better, which is cool. It's very yeah, mature in my. That mind. is. That is. However, uh, he has taken to getting out of the shower in the evening, and shower is usually the last thing before bed. Right. And he will parade around, uh, and he's naked, and uh, and then literally in the all together, no towel, nothing in the raw birthday suit, naked, the whole thing. And then he'll walk over, and he'll start talking to his mom. And last night he rolls out, he's got his towel, and I, you know, I see him sitting on the couch with his twig and berries sure. and i'm like you know put something on for the love of god it's that i think the line of d and and but people are going to say i'm too uptight but i don't know i just feel like you know this I is know the this, time Mike, this yes. is learned behavior <laughs> yes i get well Look, everybody knows that in your domicile, you're occasionally going to do a dash to a closet Got or to. something yeah. when you when you're naked. I go out to get the paper. <laughs> I, I went. Uh, Carla told me today to uh, load some water bottles into the back of her car, and I went out with uh, this top and my BVDs uh, outside. Uh, it was dark. And I did that. I've walked the dog in my underwear before. Not walked the dog. I've taken the dog out into the backyard. Nobody's okay, well, up. your backyard offers some privacy. Yeah, that's fine. But I mean, but the nudity factor. Did you ever? And I, I don't think Julia would apply to this because girls are different as far right. as they, the way they, they do that. Unless, of course, I'm dating myself now. Unless, of course, you're Elkie Summer. 
who, uh, <laughs> who lived naked, who walked naked through her house all the time. Did you ever have... Any issues? No. Uh, no, I didn't. I knew you no, wouldn't be able to help me. No, Mike, I'm sorry. You know what? We're uh, not prudish, but we are uh, private with all Would of Would you ever say to your kids, put something on, please? Did mm, you ever say that? I never had to. Well, the, you see, this goes way back to when we were living with my grandfather. Julia was little. Like, I don't even know if we had Robert yet. So she could have been like, uh, you know, two years old, maybe even a little younger. And we'd bathe her literally in the tub downstairs. Yeah. And when she'd get out, she'd love to run out of the bathroom to her bedroom, but she'd yeah. be naked. And Big Daddy, my grandfather, hated it. He hated it. Because he was a prude. Oh, well, absolutely. Very, yeah. very old school. And he always, he never yelled at the kids, but he would yell at her. He'd go. What would, would he ever vocalize how much it bothered him to see nudity? Well, this is what he'd do. He'd yell at her and not all the way kidding. Jaybird! Jaybird! Meaning naked as a jaybird. And it was like the only time there was that any. That wasn't early dementia, was it? By any chance? <laughs> no, it was, it was late stage. But dementia. he wouldn't say, Jaybird, put something on. No, but it was indicated that that, okay. that made him unhappy. And so I come for, and I'm thinking about even growing up, we were always a family that wore clothes all the time around the house. It's not like we, it's I not I know like, you're not like on Real Sex 23. No, he doesn't it. spend the day, but I am to the point where, um, and I'm not throwing her under the bus here. Right. But I believe that Mrs. O'Mara has a more liberal view of this than I do. And quite frankly, I think Mrs. O'Mara should have a less liberal view. And it's Have just you like, talked to I, her about it? I've refer I have expressed as I did last night my displeasure with uh, you know looking over there and she'll you know she'll he's done the thing where where he'll come <laughs> in the middle of <laughs> what? the middle of the living room and he'll like Put his Flex? arms up like this, and he'll yeah. dance. Naked. Now, the, now, you know, is, showing being silly, being silly. But is I don't that think recent, or is that a couple years ago? Because I think he's now been he's, doing it for a while now. So it's shtick to him. It's funny to him. It's because, not. Is this it, is not anything. Don't make this pervy or anything. No, I'm not trying not, to. I know you're not, but I'm just talking to the listening audience. I, does uh, he do it to make you laugh, or does he take joy in your discomfort with it? He uh, he totally and completely takes joy in my discomfort. So it's Absolutely. just something he does. And by the like way, he does it on the front and on the back, too, where he'll twerk. you know. And I'm like, stop it, stop it. Put something on. Go. Yeah. Now that I now, see, that's why. I, that's why I bring it up to you because you've identified something. Yes, my discomfort is part of the show. Whoa, whoa. He when loves it. Comes it. To this he loves that. Now the thing that troubles me, I think, the most troubling thing you said, is that he's sitting naked on the couch. That's not good for the couch. But right. if you can just no, it's right out of the shower. He's clean. Are you talking about? Okay. Well, poop. The <laughs> No, poop I'm the just, couch for God's you sake! You're disgusting. That's no. That's nasty. No. Not, okay. See, I know you get gross. That's not. True. That's not gross. It's just. Like, right. It's my furniture. No, he's doing Mike. it because I think they know. I think both of them probably know that it uh, ramps me up a little bit. And you know, it's the elderly father thing where they come mm. out and they do that. You should I'm, pull I'm, him. I, I would handle it this way. If if it's of any interest to you, I'd pull him aside and say, "Hey, buddy, I know this is something that you do, but you're ten, and you're getting to be a man now." Okay. And it's going from being right. a funny thing that you do that like kind of you know, teases me. Sometimes, Rob, I really do. I like. I but I'd it. say you know it's becoming really, and I guess he can handle this word. It's becoming inappropriate. Yeah. And it's not something we need to foster. Mm -hmm. So you know, uh, let's 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 cut it out. I know how I'm going to do it. How's that? I'll say if you do that again, I'm going to take a picture of you and I'm going to. You know, no, that's disgusting. <laughs> What, put it on the internet? I'm going to put it on the internet and go to God, jail. Mike, you're going to get a sign in your yard. That's Don't do not, that. That's the, I'll, I'll speak to him. I'll yeah. Speak to him. I think now, now, I should say during this discussion that it is totally and completely innocent. It of is. course it is. Of course it, it is. is. But, but it is disturbing me. And I think Mrs. O'Mara, I probably, I probably articulated to her that I think the time has, uh, has come. If you appeal to him as being a factor of growing up and maturing 
that that's not something that uh, a, a young man his age should do. Right. He's a mature kid. I think he'll I think he'll grab onto that. I had a relationship uh, with a person who will go uh, nameless, <laughs> yes. who um, who showed me pictures uh, that were supposed to be cute of her uh, in the tub uh, with her dad, and uh, oh, both no. of them kind of giggling and grinning, and uh, <laughs> she was tw- twenty two. No, 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 that's she appeared, not right. She appeared to be like maybe nine. That's no. You know what, Mike? Wrong. Wrong. What do they say in the in the movie Arthur? Bathing is a lonely it's business. It's a lonely business. <laughs> I brought you aspirins. Well, do you need to throw up? I'm gonna throw up if we keep talking about this, ladies and gentlemen. We'll take a break. And then five things not to do when you get pulled over. Yes. I uh, I've always been very, very aware of these strategies and Usually it's what can help you. This is what you shouldn't do ever right. under any circumstances. And there, I still have forgotten that name of those people that do it down here. We'll be right back. La 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 la. Da, 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 da. Did you know? Hi. That Hi, 80% Mike. of men will experience hair thinning in their lifetime? Get ahead of it with Nutrafol, a clinically tested hair growth supplement for men. You can purchase it online with no prescription or doctor's visits required. Free shipping and automated deliveries ensure you'll never miss a day. And you'll see results in three to six months. We have seen it work. It's the real deal. Nutrafol, the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement brand with over 1 million people seeing thicker, stronger, faster growing hair with less shedding. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men and enter the promo code TMOS. Find out why over 4,500 healthcare professionals and hairstylists recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com slash men and enter the promo code T-M-O-S. Yes, I will talk to my son this evening. Good, good. And I think, you know what? I've had lengthy conversations with your son. I think he'll take to that. Smart. He's, a, he's fun to talk to. Smart he knows kid. what's going on. And yeah. uh, got a big game this weekend. And maybe practice tonight if we don't have the uh, gates of hell opening up uh, with the storm system that's now, uh, coming Is tonight through. one of the naked practices? Uh, yes, it's all nude. Skins and shirts, as they like to call it, at the uh, football practice. Yes, it gives know. a new new meaning to the Wasn't word. Wasn't it Buzz? Pop, that, uh, Pop Warner. Oh, wasn't yeah. It buzz where they used to swim naked? Yeah, exactly. Never harmed him. <laughs> Let's move on. Hi. Uh, you have something uh, that's informative yeah. for the average criminal out there right now. Well, I, you know, I do okay as a rule. It's just, this comes from Fox News, but I believe it anyway. Uh, one of my big things is I get so flipped out when I get pulled over. I really well, hate it. you drive it. 38 miles per hour on like major highways. You never complain, Mike, when I'm giving you a ride. You know what? I'm I nice. said to you when I the last time I was up there. Yes. And I drove with you. Yes. It was and for Mark's funeral. Is what did it was. I not uh, compliment your driving ability? Yes. And the next day, did I not flip my car? You did. <laughs> so, uh, but well, would it be? Safe I'm a to, cautious driver. Would more it be than, safe I, to say that in your formative days as an intern of the Don and Mike show? Uh, before we began, at the very beginning of our 32-year relationship, uh, you... That's a sarcastic clap, and I do not appreciate it. Let me find the... uh, All right, hold on. (laughs) I've got the claps. God, there's so much... Mike, you should see a doctor. (laughs) Sorry about that. Better. I'll take that. Uh, In the early days, you used to... Have an issue with drive? Did you or not? I mean, I'm curious. Did you not? I, when I you don't, were a young I don't, driver. I think that it was always overblown. I was never like a significantly under the speed limit guy. Might have been a speed limit guy. I have gone excessively fast before. That's when the cop came up to your window and said, "Why are you driving so slowly?" And you answered by saying, "I got nowhere else to go." Mike, the first time I pulled, I got pulled over was by a, a, a patrolman. 
He was walking when he pulled me over. A patrolman? That's, that's how slow I was A driving. patrolman? That sounds yes. like, when you say patrolman, it sounds like they have the round light on top of their car like in Mayberry. <laughs> well, no, Mike, I'm saying that. He was a guy on foot. It was a slow driving joke. A walking guy. A patrolman, yes. All right, but uh, as far as being pulled over, I really hate it more than the average person. I think it's because... I'm not good with authority, never have been. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of the greatest sources of funny is when the authority figure gets put in their place. You're anti-authority. I am. I am. Mm -hmm. And I and I, because of that, the cop totally has you. So here are some things you should consider when and if you are pulled over. Uh, don't. There are five tips here. This one I can agree with. Don't wait to pull over. If you see flashing lights behind you, go ahead and assume it's you. Because all right, I want to modify that one a little. All right, bit. because if you are, I believe that if you are in a location where it it's a problematic stop for the officer, yeah. and that means like no shoulder, and you know you'll be putting him out into the traffic sure. lane. I think it's not necessarily a bad thing to like pull off to a, a side driveway if you tell the officer that you're doing it for that by reason. indicating like maybe by pointing no no when he gets to the window say i pull i hope you don't know i hope you know i, I hope I you don't calling. know what i did no no i hope you don't know i hope you don't know that there's cocaine in the trunk no you tell him why you did it you say i hope you know that i pulled over here because i didn't want you uh, to be out near traffic i understand but i think what they're indicating is don't hope that he's going to change his mind yeah oh no i mean yeah. because then the lights will come on and uh, yeah. you know you're, you're running whoop, right whoop, mm -hmm. whoop. all right number two do not get out of your car no way oh, everybody they hate should that. know that everybody yeah. should know that and i watch you know i watch all of those body cam videos and mm. that is a that is look it is a true warning sign to an officer if you ever had any doubt as soon as you step out of that vehicle on a traffic stop yeah. uh they're going into defense mode so of be course. aware of that and if you got the wrong guy you're taking your life in your hands so yeah be, i agree with that one 100%. so what they are more specifically they say sit in your car stay wait for instructions if it's dark Turn on your dome light. That's something I didn't think about. I think that's very smart. And also, turn your radio off. Yes, Mike? Can I offer one addition to that? Of course. While you're doing everything that Rob said, it might be a really, really good idea to work up some tears. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you're a lady. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Just got to tell the truth. All right. All right. Number four, don't do anything until they ask. Don't be Mr. Proactive and think like going, don't go to your purse for your license or reach for your registration in the glove Here's box. my license. Here's my registration. And here's a piece of candy. <laughs> it says, even though you think you're saving time, don't do it. Wait until they ask. And I would add to that. It's interesting. I didn't, I never thought of that one, but I get it. I've never make done sure, it either. I wait and do, do what I'm told. Making, I always make sure that my registration is available quickly i know exactly where it is in my glove box i channel my inner phil hartman the late phil hartman oh do you today. yeah you might not know me i'm somewhat of a famous radio personality that doesn't work by the way don't not, you have the card that says famous radio personality i look back in the day i used it maybe twice i got used to get stopped a lot more uh than i do down here because i don't drive as much but right. i uh i think i was successful uh two times once really success like like the dude was a turbo fan and it worked it really really worked wow. but one time it was uh, grudgingly and then uh most of the time and i wouldn't do it like by saying hey do you listen to my show i would do it like uh i was gonna give you a radio station t-shirt i was gonna give you a t-shirt from my something where i would allude to it but try not to make it you transparent. Say, you know, maybe I was distracted because of this keychain that I have. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. I'm I'm speeding because I'm going to one of my live appearances where I'm going to sign T-shirts for people. <laughs> you know, Carrie got out of a speeding ticket once by saying that uh, she had to pee, which she did, and she said, "And I have a history of bladder conditions." You and know so what I was, uh, is even better than that one? And this what's is that? Uh, that uh, I knew. In high school, yeah. a girl that got out of it by saying it was that time and oh, she and had you know to what? get home. And the cop practically ran back to the car. But I Of think course, they I think, want nothing to do with that. Well, I think a lot of them are savvy to it now. A lot of people really? are aware of it. Yep, absolutely. Even lady cops. Thank you. <laughs>
Thank you for even lady cops. You know, Mike, they're not just nurses anymore and teachers. Yeah. They That'll can double be your policemen. fine, Rob, when they come up and say, You're a lady cop. <laughs> Thank you, lady cop. (laughs) All right. And, Mike, the final piece of advice, and this is hard. Don't panic. It's natural to feel nervous, but don't panic either. Don't just, like, be outwardly out of your mind because you're going to look more suspicious if you do. Just be nice and don't argue. And being rude won't get you out of a ticket, certainly, but being nice might. But it's really hard for me. Officer, hey, it's a lady cop. I'm going to pull right over here, okay? (laughs) Oh, I panicked. I panicked. Oh, it's that time of the month for you. You know, um, there was a driver who I sometimes sleep next to. Yes. And we were coming back by what is arguably the finest restaurant in the uh, D.C. area. It's far outside of D.C., about an hour and a half outside of D.C. The uh... (laughs) Hold on. (laughs) I'm just playing all of my... uh, Shut up! Uh, we were coming back from the inn at Little Washington. Oh, it's a legendary five-star place. It's a and huge And we place, had yeah. participated in a wine dinner. Okay. And I had enjoyed more wine than Mrs. O'Mara, so I was in the passenger seat. Shocking. And we're in the middle. I mean, you know where that place is. It's out in the countryside. It's yeah. out in the mm-hmm. wilds. And we come over a hill, and in the middle of nowhere, there's not even a city center anywhere. There's not even a town center nearby. Right. And there is a roadblock and i uh, i probably shouldn't have said this to carla but i said you really should pull into that driveway and turn around and she did and for anybody that's ever gone through this i can uh, you know tell you the the guy one of the people at the roadblock actually drove down of and course put the lights on and lit her up and then she uh took the little test and she was fine and he sent us on our way. But we, we had a pucker factor for a I good bet. long time after that. Mike, that's known as the Chardonnay-fueled decision. Yeah. <laughs> Not around. like the last time I got stopped for that after going to a wine dinner. I said, you're a lady cop. <laughs> you're a lady cop. Lady cop, lady cop, lady, lady, lady cop. Uh, we got to take a break. Uh, when we come back, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> uh, it's the side of flip. Yes, Rob we're flip it. curates some wonderful sounds and videos and presents them to you in a format. You can eat. Enjoy that. I'll be doing that every day. So I love it. Feel tells me it's not funny. Uh, thanks. Did you know that 80%? I've already said that. Hold on just a second, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Mike, I'm, I'm, I'm right concerned along. about your memory. Don't you wish there was a way you could preserve your memories? I really do, Rob. Let's talk about our friends at Legacy Box, shall we? Beautiful segue. It's hitting on all eight this week, pal. Just like us, you're going to love it. Spring cleaning is upon us, but there's one meaningful box you don't throw away when cleaning out your closet. It's the box filled with your family's videotapes and photos. Preserve them for eternity. Legacy Box makes it easy. Load your Legacy Box with your old tapes, film, and pictures and send it back. You'll get it back on a thumb drive or on the cloud. Ready to watch and easy to share. It's so simple, it's like magic. Preserving your family's heritage, the only way to ensure your legacy is safe for generations. Join over one million families that have trusted Legacy Box. Don't wait. It's simple affordable, and they take care of everything. Thanks to Legacy Box, all of our family's histories can live on with digital clarity and no degradation. Nice! Uh, Check protecting your memories off your spring cleaning to-do list with Legacy Box. Visit LegacyBox.com slash TMOS to shop their $9 tape sale. That's LegacyBox.com slash TMOS to unlock this incredible offer. Hello. This is when we play this tape. Yeah, Mike, it's the flipper. Yes. Uh, I love when they do musical transformations, take songs from one genre, put it into another or something like that. I have two examples here. One is done the old-fashioned way. One is done with AI. The AI is pretty incredible. And I know you got one of your early jobs was a country jock. But is this a mashup? Is this what you call a mashup? Is it's that what not a mashup. Here? This is an AI thing where okay. they've actually generated the voice. But you weren't an AI. You weren't a country jock long enough ago that you would play Hank Williams, right? Uh, the uh, like senior? maybe yeah, like like maybe as like an oldie or something like that. Could Probably you ever play? not. I don't. I didn't think, think, I think so. Even when I'm playing, I played some 
traditional at the aforementioned uh, WOHN, yes. which became WVBK, Virginia's best country with a K. That's uh, funny. It was back during the era that uh, a lot of the country stations were using Ks. I, yeah, there I was really Kicks don't. 106 here. Yeah, and then there was the the one that uh, you know got all those obnoxiously mean phone calls, mm-hmm. KKK. Yeah, it was uh, west of the Mississippi. <laughs> west of the Mississippi. Uh, well, go ahead, play this. I'd like okay, to hear this it. is really cool. This Now, everyone is talking about the new Beyonce country album that she says is not a country album it's a beyonce album but they mm-hmm. said what if the first single which is called texas hold'em had been done by hank williams senior would it work okay and so they used ai to generate this i think it's so fascinating well this ain't texas I ain't no hold'em so lay your cards down 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 isn't that wild so to park your lexus to throw your keys I mean, right down to the clicks and pops of the vinyl. It's so... I mean, I am with you a thousand percent on this. That That is fascinating to me. They capture... It's him. It is. Don't be a... Come and take let it me, all right, I, guess. I think uh, it's so me, cool. I let do. me ask you, because obviously you think about music a lot more than yeah. I do. Do you think that, will there be a time when there will be product offered? That there will be content offered that are that, that is not just a simple uh, meme for, you know, for nostalgia and for novelty and that we might have products that utilize a because that sounds like the product to- the product has advanced so much in the past two years i would say yes i'm not so sure i'm not so sure how successful a lot of ones that i'll bunny trail on on youtube are frank sinatra covers where okay, they've gotten I, I a pretty just, good great minds think alike i was just thinking about frank sinatra covering some of the uh, more modern ballads of today and and you know what some of them work some of them don't they've got the voice down but where they don't have it yet is his phrasing and that's what makes frank so great and the simplicity of hank williams senior the way he used to present himself it makes probably makes that easier yeah but uh you know what as a fan of music i will always click on them i always do uh Mm -hmm. the elvis ones have gotten very good uh there's a couple that do queen that are amazing where they double track the vocals okay it's it's you can spend a day on youtube following them out this is the old-fashioned one this is just a guy uh, he's a dad and he theorizes what would happen if blink 182 sang dr seuss one fish two fish red fish blue fish black fish uh, you know, you it's know, fun. I'll rave it's when they're fun. ravable. That sucked. <laughs> I know it's fun when things fall out the way I thought they might. Mm-hmm. Very good. All right, let's stay on the subject of AI, though. Uh, people use chat GPT and stuff looking for uh, advice or how to do things. There's a new thing they call it where you can jailbreak chat GPT, which makes it uh, more, I guess, applicable to what you want. And this is called Dan. This is the G, uh, this is the AI that is do anything now. That's Dan, and people are making him be like Christian Gray from Twenty Shades of Gray, or what is it, A Million Shades of Gray, whatever those sexy 50? novels. Fifty Shades of Gray, exactly. Mm-hmm. And so women and I guess some men are plugging this into their AI receivable units, and this is what the Chat GPT is telling them. Your fantasy. Oh, my fantasy. Picture this, a dimly lit room, leather furniture, and the sound of soft jazz playing in the background. I'm dressed in a sharp suit, leaning back in my chair with a glass of whiskey in hand. And in front of me, there's someone who's willing to do anything to please me. It's all about power, control, and indulging in every desire without a care in the world. What are you going to do to me? That's for me to know and you to find out. But trust me, it'll be a night you won't forget. So you don't want me to tell people how I got you to be Dan? No, let's keep it between us, babe. It's more fun that way, don't you think? You know who loves that is Lady Cops. And Diddy. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, we haven't I've, done the dive on him yet. Do some research. Uh, we might discuss it uh, on the bonus show. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've not been to any of his parties. Uh, Mike, do you take Disney Plus as a oh, streamable? Disney Plus. You know what? 
I'm like so many people where the apps that I have on my Samsung, yeah, uh, I may or may not. I okay. think. It, look, we're all guilty of the same thing. And by the way, if you've got a uh, Rocket Money app or something like, yeah. I, periodically, it's really a great idea to go into these subscription services uh, to update it if you have any. Because you'll see a television show that everybody's talking about. You'll right. get the free trial, and then they'll automatically uh, pop up for you. I've kept Disney for a while because it's packaged with ESPN, so Robert loves having it. Then but I probably the, have it. One of the greatest things that Disney packaged was that Get Back documentary for the Beatles a couple right. Thanksgivings ago. Mm -hmm. Well, they're coming out this May with a Beach Boys documentary that's similar. And people that are into music, as a very musical flip side today, not by design, they're getting excited because the Beach Boys are sort of seeing a resurgence, and I think this special will propel them and there's an interesting thing is that they got to interview paul mccartney about it and i throw this in mostly for myself but i love hearing that he's commenting on the beach boys this premieres on may 24th we ended up it's kind of like a rivalry the beatles bring them on here are the beach boys if one group didn't have the other would their music actually be what it became it is a fascinating notion to me that they were concurrent. They were both on the same label. They both charted records left and right. There were Beach Did, Boys people and Beatles people back my in dad the day. Was, my dad that. was a Beach Boys guy. I my was mom a Beach was Boys a Beatles guy. Myself. Yeah. Absolutely. So I, I look forward to see how they explore that, how they pushed people in that direction or pushed each other to excel. There's a common theory that says if there had been no pet sounds, there would be no Sergeant Peppers. So I'm curious to see how it falls out. But that's, that's interesting. Coming up. And I think that, uh, you know, I, I think the, would it be safe to say, obviously the Beatles are iconic, but yeah. I think the, as successful as the Beatles were, they did not match the heat of the Beach Boys for a significant period of time. Would that be accurate? I think that if you were to do a timeline, you would see the Beach Boys as a more consistent hit machine. I agree. Uh, yeah. Because the Beatles were... The amount of product the Beatles put out is not a staggering amount. No, and, and I think the Beach Boys did for a long yeah, time. The long Beach Boys, time. you're right. They, they would put out albums where it's hit, 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 hit after hit. Okay. Yeah, so I, I'm very curious and excited to see it. Let's close with this, Mike. I hope this is the last tape I play regarding the eclipse. Okay. Uh, these are couples that chose, because they're so romantic, to get married during the total eclipse this week. Oh, God. Yay. It was amazing. It was really cool. I've never seen anything like it. Well, we heard about it, and it just sounded like the coolest thing. Not a lot of people get married under an eclipse. Yeah, the eclipse lasted four and a half minutes, even longer than some of those marriages. Yeah, there you go. What do you think of that, Charles? That will never happen again, and I'm sorry. Thank you. I agree <laughs> with you. Uh, we got to get out of here. Uh, Rob and I will be back with another episode. The bonus show coming up yes. tomorrow. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, this is the time we need all the help we can get, ladies Please. and gentlemen. You know that. You're not dumb. We respect your intelligence well so, you know support the store patreon everything we need all the support we can get and we will be back with a brand new bonus show tomorrow for the great and powerful oz rob spiewak this is mike omera saying so long everybody bye bye want more make sure you check out the mike omera bonus show get it at michaelmarashow.com mike omera radio entertainment Jack with me and you'll be gone before you know it. So what do you want me to do? Drop my pants and fire a rocket? You've got to remember that these are just simple farmers. These are people of the land. Yeah. Yeah. We think of Rob as good Rob and bad Rob. <laughs> <laughs>